Ladies and gentlemen, goblins and ghouls, and all of those in between, communication is essential and probably won't be that effective, but we'll see exactly how it goes. This is ComQuest. <laughs> You had See, that's that so prepared. You were like, I'll just roll this out. The ladies and gentlemen. No, I've been thinking about it. I was like, okay. we're going to see if it, if I can get it through in one take and giggle or if I can just do it. Proud of you. Um, so you know what this means? Yeah. You really have to change your major. What do you mean? Well, if, if it's called ComQuest. Yeah. I am I not. I, am, I spearheaded this. I'm not a com student. Yeah. Yeah, but you're not, you're not one of the people on the quest. I'm the DM. Oh. <laughs> he just said I'm the DM and did a, did a camera look. He, was he like, did. Mm, I'm going to edit this in later. I'm the DM. <laughs> this is Jeff right there. This is where I'm going to start. Like, this is the way to start it. You know, just cut into the conversation. Mm -hmm. um, I should say hello, probably. Um, yeah. Hello, everyone. This is ComQuest. I'm Jacob Delandro. Um, this is D&D, &D, uh, as loosely as you could probably refer to it as this is we're gonna see exactly how smoothly this goes um yeah this is we will be playing various D, &D campaigns um com quest because most of the people involved are uh involved with the communications department i am not funnily enough but but um speaking of said people why don't you go ahead and in introduce yourselves we'll get to characters later but just introduce yourselves I'm Jeff Halliday, Chair of the Communication Studies Department, also professor, and I kowtow to the Dr. Awesome. <laughs> okay, well, I am Dr. Awesome, uh, Clint Wright. I am the Broadcast Studio Managing Engineer for Digital Media within Communication Studies here at Longwood. I'm not even a comm student. <laughs> uh, I'm Anjali. I'm a graphic design major here at Longwood University. All right, and so yeah, the basic of this is going to be I'm going to be DMing various campaigns. Um, some will be shorter than others. Some will take multiple sessions, um, and you all will be trudging your way through it with me. Um, we'll see how this goes for the first go around, and if it's as enjoyable as I hope it will be. Um, now was probably the appropriate time to get into characters. So once again, starting with uh, Halliday. Sure. Why don't you introduce your character? Oh, by the way, I figured out why it's ComQuest is because if you didn't call it that, we wouldn't let you use our beautiful studio. <laughs> that's uh, yes, that's exactly why. That's why. Yeah, it's a beautiful studio. Uh, so um, I'm going to brush off the rust from last playing D&D &D in 1996 uh, to be playing uh, Aquila uh, or Aquila. Aquila. Uh, Aquila is a tiefling race uh, paladin, uh, folk hero, lawful good character. So uh, tiefling. Um, when you proposed all of this to me, uh, Jacob, I said, I don't know what that is, so I'll be that. Uh, and I'm excited to play the Tiefling Aquila. And your class? Ooh, class uh, Paladin level one. All right. Dr. Awesome. Um, well, much like, uh, was it Aquila? Yes. Much like Aquila, I have uh, not played D&D in quite some time. <laughs> better part of a decade, maybe longer. Uh, but I'm excited. My character's name is Ixus. I am a half-elf sorcerer. Uh, I am a chaotic neutral alignment. And uh, I'm, I'm really excited to be quite possibly the most annoying person that any NPC in this game has, has run across. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> uh, Angelie? And I am Varys. I am a high elf rogue. I am neutral good. <laughs> With a charlatan background, I'm so I'm so glad that you ended up being a good character as well. Because the moment that I heard your uh, character in comparison to his, I was like, I really hope she brings some sort of like level playing field. Because otherwise, this is going to be uh, this is going to be Rocky and Bullwinkle. This is going to be just a back and forth the entire time of like stop stop that. We have things to do. <laughs> That's fair. I'm gonna do my very best to be fair and to be nice. I'm not just kidding. <laughs> all right. I'm definitely not. <laughs> yeah, you're going all in. Yep. So, to actually begin, um, this campaign is called The Horror at Havel's Cross. 
When a group of archaeologists put out a call for adventurers to help them escort a valuable artifact back to civilization, nobody expects anything out of the ordinary. However, our heroes have more than mere bandits to deal with at Havel's Cross. Will they be able to survive the horrors waiting for them and piece together a ghoulish mystery? So at the very beginning, you three, we're going to go with the typical cliched, you all met in an inn. Uh, this is the first time you've met each other. Um, the inn is the spring shoot. It is a quiet inn, most frequented by halflings, gnomes, and other diminutive sorts. Um, there's a woman with curly chestnut brown hair and purple robes sitting alone at a table reading a heavy book off in the corner. There's a professor engrossed um, in her work. And there's just various taverny in people just kind of trouncing around. It is a tavern environment, um, kind of like with a door in the background that leads to the actual inn where rooms and things of that nature are. So um, that's up to you all. We can just go in order. Um, we won't really care about turn order unless we're actually in combat. Um, but so whoever wants to make the first move, ask the first people. Um, Go so ahead. Are, are we already we're already a group, or we're just we're in this this inn together? You know of each other. You you've like it's like when you're in a room and like there's very few people in there. Like you walk into a classroom and there's two people in there. You kind of give the nod of like, hey, like the the acknowledgement. Um, if you want to have a full blown scene where you're like, hi, I'm Ixies. What's your name? You're more than welcome to do that. Um, Ixis. 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 Um, but yeah, it's 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 up to you all. So we're going to look for the, uh, the archaeologist, anthropologist. What would you say? Mm -hmm. So right now you are just in this inn. Um, there's someone you were looking for. I apologize. I should have mentioned that. Their name is Landy. That's all you know. You're looking for someone named Landy, who you were told will be in the Spring Shoot Inn. Got it. You said there's a woman with purple robes. Mm -hmm. And a professor in the corner. Mm-hmm. I believe, I'm trying to see if they are the same person. It does not specify. Um, I think they are the same person. Remember, I think the look at the camera. Yeah. I'm the DM. I, I think I am the DM. <laughs> I think I'm 99% I'm sure they are the same person. You here for the artifact? <laughs> you here for the artifact? Who are you? I'm going to wander off from them. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you headed? Uh, I am headed in the direction. Are there waiters? Yeah, it's a general tavern. There's, there's somebody behind a bar. Um, it's not like a fancy, like, there would be waiters around. There's the person behind the bar who you would go to. Hey, can I have some food? And they will bring it out to you. Um, but they're kind of behind the bar for right now. Um, it's just like a mom and pop kind of bed and breakfast in kind of place. So not a lot of drinking happening. I mean, it is a tavern. This is a tavern chunk, so there there is drink to be had. Uh, is there somebody who looks relatively distracted that I could possibly uh, sidle up to and pilfer a bottle from? I'm assuming I'm broke. Um, I mean, I, be I believe you each, I think starting characters each have 10 gold apiece, um, just as the nature of it. Um, the uh, the most distracted person in the room by far is the professor who's off in the corner. She is completely buried in a very large book that's sitting in front of her. Awesome. I'm going to go sit. Is there, is there a booth or a seat open near her? Uh, there is a seat open at her table. Um, her table is kind of pushed into the corner. The only thing around her are um, a few like medieval high chairs, things like that. There's no table immediately in her vicinity. Um, there's only about two or three in the entire room, and she's taking up one of them. Well, I came to sit in this corner because I didn't want people bothering me. So you're not Landy, then? You say Landy? No. Okay. Bye. So I'm watching Ixus over here, mm -hmm. whoever he is. I'm, I'm, just, I'm st guy. standing near this table. I'm not, I, I didn't sit, but I'm kind of just lurking around. You're near the table I'm with the... the table. Uh, does, she, does she have, like, food or drink that I could pilfer? Um, she has a drink of, you cannot tell if it is anything particularly alcoholic. It does not have the look of mead, um, and it is in an unmarked uh, bottle. Um, that is the only thing sitting on her table besides a very large book, some, like, writing utensils. She, you said she's largely distracted. Mm -hmm. She has her face pointed in the book. Um, you're going to have to correct me if I'm wrong about how these spells work. Um, <laughs> I would like to use Mage Hand to take that bottle. 
All right, I believe for Mage Hand. We're going right out of the gate. How many of those do you get in a day? Oh yeah, that's we. Oh, that's true. I don't. How many? How many spell? I think you get. Four, three. Okay, so those are listed as. So those are no, cantrips. Can yeah. So I'm pretty sure cantrips. Your. You yeah, you can just roll. Awesome. Um, <laughs> I was just making sure. Yeah, I'm. Take so that would be an Arcana check. Okay. Um, so that's a intelligence. So roll. Uh, oh, that is a d that is a d20. Okay, so you just roll a d20 and add your intelligence modifier to it. Um. Ooh, hang on, sorry. <laughs> now the, the modifier. Can't do that. The, well, I, I actually relaxed <laughs> it on you. So the modifier is twelve and not plus one, right? The modifier is plus one. Plus one. Okay. Yes. You can't wait to you're gonna edit so much of this. I mean, How some some of, work again, Jacob? some of this is like amusing, um, but I mean, you yeah. Done it in 20 years. Oh yeah. More and more. Ooh, that would be a solid nine with my modifier. With your modifier, uh, yeah, your mage hand kind of floats over, almost like a little bit of a spurt, and the, as it gets closer to the bottle, you see she's still staring into the book, but she just waves it away. You, uh, you want something there, bud? I'm thirsty. You want a drink? I would love a drink. Okay. I take access to the bar. <laughs> All right. I follow. <laughs> you walk into the bartender. I'll have some ice chips. All right. Just for you, then? Just like a big bucket for both of us would just, be good. Just a big bucket of ice. So two buckets of ice chips or one to share? One to share. One Family bucket size. of ice chips to share. Would you like that brought to the bar or to the table? Let's, let, let's hang out at the bar. I'm oh. down with the bar. Yeah. All right, one bucket of ice chips for the both of you. That will be two gold pieces. So slide two gold pieces. All right, mark that. All right. Brings you out a bucket of ice chips. I'm assuming you two begin. That'd be some good ice. Chunk, Too cold. <laughs> chunking on ice chips. Are you doing anything in the background? I find that uh, little dalliance there adorable. I'm going to go up and introduce myself to the person reading a book. All right. So you, so you walk up. Forgive me for interrupting you. My name is Akila, and I'm here for Landy. Are you Landy? Yes, I am indeed. You, you must be one of the party that I sent for. I am. Uh, forgive me for interrupting, but uh, I'm I'm here to listen. Anything you tell me, may I sit? Absolutely. Which, 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 which direction is she from the bar? Um, if you are sitting at the bar, imagine there's like the f she's like that way. That way? Yeah. Thank you so much for coming um, so quickly. Um, I, I am an archaeologist, and my my team and I we were investigating an elven death cult. Um, they asked me to stay in town while they continued out to the research site for the day and a couple of days ago our, our leader he got back in touch with me uh, via some scrolls of sending and he said that they found something interesting and possibly dangerous and that they needed people stronger than they to come and bring it back to the town I was to stay here and meet uh, whoever those people would be I'm the one who sent out the the call that I received your response to. That's interesting. Um, I'm happy to help. I think the people eating ice chips are here for the same reason. Those, those two over there? Those two over there. The robber and the ice eater. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> I just realized you were doing effects work. You were doing... <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Should we go over there? <laughs> Would you like to ask them to come over so okay. I might introduce myself? Uh, I think you can welcome them over after he apologizes for trying to steal from you. Oh, that was him, wasn't it? Was. I wasn't much concerned with that. I can see she that. stopped me. I can see that. You two. Could you come over, please? Sure. I pick up my half melted bucket of ice chips. <laughs> Hello, you two. My name is Landy. Um, I'm an archaeologist. She goes through the same spiel that she told. Um, Akila. Akila. Um, so you all are familiar with uh, what's at stake here, um, what you've been asked to do. I can't imagine it would be 
that dangerous? My, uh, our team leader, he's, he's been through quite a bit. This is not his first death cult. This is not his first elven death cult that he's had to go through, but I, I understand his concern, him wanting uh, some who are braver, stronger than us. We are, in, we are but archaeologists. There's, there's not much that we can handle compared to you lot. <laughs> do you have any, any questions uh, so f about the quest? When do we start? <laughs> well, well, hang, hang on, I, I'm not saying that I don't want to help, because of, of, of course helping is, is, is good. Um, what, what, what did you say we get out of this? Um, I, 500 gold piece to split between the three of you. I, I can go no higher, but I, I promise you I will go no lower. What can you provide us before we start? I can provide you as much information that has been given to me. Supplies. Um, unfortunately, uh, th there is not much that I have. Um, all I can really offer you is information um, about the, the site and the, the cult itself and my team, um, any of which you would like to know. Okay. That interests me. I'm just trying to figure out if I can trust you and I can trust them. I completely understand. It's, it's bad enough receiving an anonymous call and answering it uh, for a quest, it's also bad enough waiting until uh, you actually meet the person to hear that it is, involves a death cult. Elven. Um, an elven death cult as well. Um, I would be more than happy to answer any questions you have about the area um, and about uh, my team. I, unfortunately, I know not what the artifact is. Um, I doubt that it is anything particularly valuable. Um, I don't think he would be that concerned with a cursed gem or bag of gold. Um, so I, I, I'm almost positive it is not uh, anything of that nature. Um, unfortunately, I do not know what it is he neglected to say. While you're talking, I'm looking at them, trying to get a sense of who they are. Okay. 500 gold is 500 gold. But none of it up front? Un unfortunately, no. Mm. That's not of concern to me. What about you? I'm down to hell. Yeah, man. All right. <laughs> Wonderful. I is there any sort of information that um, I can give you uh, before we plan to depart? Can we have a map of the site? Um, unfortunately, the only map is with uh, my crew. I do not have one on hand as I was uh, chosen to stay behind. Um, once we arrive, there should be uh, uh, some sort of a map that we can find um, with the rest of my crew. What warnings do you have? What else do you know? I know you said you don't know about the artifact, but we're clearly going to a place of danger. What do you know about the cult? <sighs> The, the only thing that I know about the cult is our early research from before we actually got to the site suggests that not only was it centered around death, but that it was centered around rebirth and that there was possible evidence of necromancy in the area and involved with the cult's rituals. All right. The, the area we will have to go through to get to the cult it is of some concern, less so given uh, the fact that you are, are all already adventurers, there might be a goblin or wolf or two in our path, but, but nothing that should be too... Um, Just a goblin or a wolf or two, you know. Nothing that should be too um, <laughs> concerning. Fair enough. I'm going to be really annoying to your character, I'm no, sorry. No, you're fine. <laughs> I can't wait. I'm the paladin fighting great evil, let's go. <laughs> Ben's in there, by the way. Hello, Ben. <laughs> He's very amused by this, I can tell. It's a fun idea. Right. Oh, yeah. So, uh, so there's potential for small danger on the way there, uh, with potential for rather large danger upon arrival. Um, Is there anyone else in town? Anyone else we can talk to here? Um, the only other person here is there is one member of my team, uh, a bodyguard, um, a dwarven bodyguard named Grax Shatterbone. He's the only one who remained uh, in town with me. He arrived a few days after I did, hence the reason he did not go with the rest of the team. Um, there are other people who live in the town, just general townsfolk. Um, I don't know how much use they would be to the three of you in terms of direct questions regarding um, 
our uh, journey, but, but that is up to you. I would like to leave as soon as possible. Um, I would also like to accompany you, myself and mm -hmm. Shatterbone. Um, the journey is three days away, and I, I would like to leave as soon as possible. I'd like to meet Grax first. I don't know what you guys think. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. You care? Let's meet Grax! I like people. Shatterbone, is it? Mm-hmm. It's a very, very strong, strong name. I don't know. He showed up late. Can't be that strong. <laughs> All right. Um. We're on page six. <laughs> I just realized you were wearing the PlayStation socks. Oh, yeah. I was wearing PlayStation socks. I saw that. I have that same pair. Yeah, that's right. Sorry, bro. Here. As we wait for the next scene. As we wait for Grax. All Zeros right. drinks from the bucket, the remaining water. <laughs> um, Grax, he's staying in, in uh, one of the rooms on the second floor of the inn. Um, I can either show you the way myself, or I can tell you the room number, and you all can seek him out of your own, and I can wait for you uh, here. Well, let's, let's all go together. Let's yeah, a, let's go yeah, together. Let's be a happy party. You all get right. Ready. Okay. Get ready, all right. We're all marching uh, through the inn up to the second floor. Um, there are three rooms, one of which uh, just has the door wide open. It's very clear no one has been in there. Um, the other of which uh, Landy walks over to, knocks on the door, um, whispers something through the door. She turns to you. He will be with you in just a moment. I'm going to go grab some supplies of mine. I suggest if you all need supplies, um, you should do the same. Um, she wanders into her room and shuts the door. Um, are we still pretty close to both her and Dra or Grax now? Um, yeah, the whole hallway is about as long as this uh, stage is. Um, it's like one door, one door, one door. This is the door that's empty. Very clearly no one's staying in there, her door, and then uh, Grax's, because, because Grax's door. Issues, I believe one of the things that I can do is cast Divine Sense. I believe that lets me know if there's good or evil about. Okay. I want to do that with my colleagues as well as these two new companions. All right. So for you, uh, that would also be an intelligence roll. You have a plus zero modifier, though. Super excited. So roll your d20. I don't even know what my intelligence score is. It's an 11. I'm excited. Three! Three. So All right. That did not work out. Um, you get the general sense that, hey, this place is pretty sturdy. It's not going to fall apart anytime soon. Awesome. Yeah. I've learned a lot. Thank you. All right. Would the three of you, or would the two of you so like to do anything before? She said, supply yourselves. Like, does that mean we're not going to have an opportunity to do so before we actually depart? Um, well, this is the, the general. If you say, like, I want to go to the general store and get some more rope, this would be the opportunity to do so. Um, there's nothing in particular that I would think you all would need, because you are fresh characters. You have your, your rucksacks, and your, mm -hmm. like, my supply of rope and tinder and things of that nature. Um, if there is anything in particular you want to try and seek out, there are is a pretty de standard town. There's general stores, things like that. I'm, I'm pretty sure money to buy anything. Pretty sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, we bought some ice chips. It was good. You treat uh, me to something. Uh, yeah, I mean, you owe her. I'm pretty sure. I, I don't know if my toolkit has a small like carving knife in it. That's one thing that I'd like to have. I know I've got Smith's tools. Yours has. Um. Yours does not. You do have your great sword and your hand axe, though. Uh, I'd like to go uh, when the opportunity arises. I'd like to see what the cost is of a small carving knife. All right. Would you like to go now, or would you like to wait to meet uh, Grex? I'll do what they want to do. Or Grex? Grex. Graz. Uh, oh. <laughs> well, I would like to take a quick peek into that vacant room, see if I see anything of interest. All right. Um, I'm not going to make you roll for that because there's, you, it's literally just walking to the room. Um, so yeah. Um, I need a pipe. <laughs> you need a pipe, Christ. Um, upon entering the room, you can, it's almost like the first time you walk into a hotel room, there's like the folded towel on the bed. Um, the, the window is open. Um, there's nothing, there's no sense of anything in particularly nasty. The like, uh, latrine bucket has been nicely cleaned recently. Um, and there's like a lemony fresh scent in the air. Good. <laughs> That's interesting. Um, it's, just, it's still I, you guys. I, I, I would like to go buy a pipe. 
You would like to go buy a pipe. Would you like to wait now, or would you like to meet Shatterbone? I mean, I guess if I can do it after we meet Shatterbone, I can do it after we meet Shatterbone. All right. Well, that, that was just my only question. Did you want to just go... Uh, See ya. I'm going to go get a pipe, no, or mean, if you would I, like to I, I meet Shatterbone. Shatterbone. I want to meet Shatterbone. All right. Say, so Lady's getting ready. <laughs> we, we'll, let's meet, let's meet Grax. We have enough time. Yeah. To All right. You know, um, Shatterbone. This should be exciting. Yeah. <laughs> Almost the moment after you say that, um, the the floor starts to shake a little bit with each like footstep. Um, the door creaks open, and you see what is possibly the most muscular four foot person you've ever seen in your entire life. Because as I stated, um, he is a, a dwarven bodyguard. It's almost he's almost like a very muscular baby. Um, looks what color up is his pants. Hmm? What color is his pants? Brown. Okay, never mind. Not a lot of dyes in this town. What were you? Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> so much better. So much better. I know what you're gonna do. I'm, 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 I'm lost. <laughs> oh, <Lord. laughs> um, <laughs> so well. He right, looks so up at here's Grax. Yeah, he looks up at you. You must be the three of them. How y'all doing? We're fine. You? I'm doing all right. Thank you. Do you have any wine or ale? Unfortunately, no, I, I am a teetotal. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> That's nice to meet you as well. Forgive our friend, he has vices that he enjoys. <laughs> I, I do as well, I, I understand. I might be teetotal, but I, I just cannot stop buying balls of yarn. I, I love to knit. It's, it's my personal vice. Really? Yes, yes Knitting. indeed. Yes, you would be surprised. My, my hands might be smaller than yours, but they fit the needles just as well. What kind of needles do you use? I've um, always heard that like bone needles work the best. See, I thought about that, but I've actually been working with scale needles. They're much harder to make. You need a, a large scale um, in order to actually whittle them down. Um, but, but I find them to be quite nice. I'm sure Varys loves this conversation as much as Ixus and I do, but <coughs> we, we've got some stuff to do. Landy sent us. Yes, you I... You know that. Well, what can you tell us? I understand you're coming with us. Yes, I am. Um, I'd lo we can hear the knitting tales on the way. Absolutely. I, I will love to tell them. Unfortunately, um, I know possibly less than she does as I arrived in this town after she did. And because I, I am just a bodyguard, I'm not nearly as learned as the rest of them. Uh, there's not much that I even understand about what it is that they do. I could answer whatever questions you have, but I doubt I would be of some help if you've already spoken to Landy. Hmm. Cool. The only possible information that I could give is who the rest of our team is made up of, but, but that, that is all that I know. Who is the rest of the team made up of? That would be great information to have. Um, let us see. Let me see. There's... There's two, there's two other elves, um, Kalidor, who I'm sure you've heard of. He's, he's our fearless leader, um, uh, and Skyn. Um, there's, a, there's a human, his name is Tanlik, um, and there's a gnome called Quinn. Um, we've all been working together for quite a few years. Um, we, we consider ourselves to know each other pr pretty well. It's been about three years since we went on our first uh, expedition, excavation together. Again, I know not much of their learned um, behaviors regarding all of this, but but I I can I can hold my own in battle, and that is mostly why I am here. Hmm. Fair so, enough. So I, I, I mean, I hate to be that guy. Hey, you were late. I'm sorry. Isn't that what you said that sh that he was late getting there? Yeah, yes, I was. Um, I I typically tend, uh, unless I've been explicitly told that the the area we're going into will be fairly hostile. Um, I tend to arrive a few days late uh, to most of our excavations, mainly to help with the we found a thing. Now let's get it back. Most of the time, no one pays much attention to a bunch of scholars who are wandering through a town. If we know that we will be particularly wandering through an area that is um, nasty, then I will venture with them. Uh, we did not real. 
we did not realize the nature of this area until after we arrived. We only heard, all right, this area has something we could probably look into. Let's go there next. It wasn't until they had arrived at the site that they realized, oh shit, that's a death cult. I'm glad you've had time to knit. Uh, can you tell us where the general store is, please? Uh, yes, uh, just back down these stairs, go out the front of the inn, and it's uh, to your left. Um, Unless you have a knife I can borrow. Unfortunately, I, I do not. Um, I prefer to fight hand-to-hand. Uh, -hand. Um, occasionally, I'll, I'll pull out the scale needles, but... Uh, do you have any pipes? <laughs> I... Turns back around, looks back in the room, as if he's counting something. No, no pipes. I apologize. I tried. If there's anything else that I can answer for you all, um, I, I have to finish packing my things, and I will meet you all with Landy in the town center, um, which is only a little ways before you reach the general store. It's literally like the center of town. Varys, any question? Um, I want to ask, is his door still open? Can I see behind him? Yeah. Can um, I see into the room behind him? Yeah. Are there any pipes in that room? No, there's no pipes. Mm -hmm. There's an absurd amount of balls of yarn sitting in almost a pyramid on like the table, um, but there are there are no pipes. Anything else besides the yarn? Um, well, for you, given that you're not a rogue, I will have I would have you make a uh, what what is that? What would that be called? I guess that would be an in, an intelligence check or uh, in, yeah, investigation. I look forward to rolling my next three. It is a 13. 13. It's a 13 plus zero. You can tell that there is a cup on the table. You can't tell what it's full of. It's a solid metal cup, so you can't see through it. Um, you can see a half-finished knitting thing on the table and what looks like a piece of paper, like a map laid out on the bed. What's the map for? Well, the ma well that's how we're going to get to the death cult location. Um, don't have a map of the place, but I know how to get there. Can I look at the map real fast? Sure. Excellent. All right. Thank you. No problem. Uh, I will meet you all in the town center in just a few moments. Should be enough time for you to grab anything else you need. Groovy. All right. Groovy. <laughs> That's cool. Thank you, Grax. No problem. All right. Uh, you're all going to go buy your I'm knife. Go and price your some knives. What kind of knives? Knives. Are How much they cost? Welcome, good sir. <laughs> what can I sell you today? I'm looking for knives. Wonderful. We have many knives on display here. Keep what can cheap, I... <laughs> Anything five gold pieces or less. Cheap. All right. Um, I have this. I, it's, I think it's like a, some guy used it to like pick his teeth a while ago. It's, I mean, it's, it's fine. It's only slightly rusty, but it uh, should do fine, I guess. Um, we can take... What did you say your limit was? I didn't. What else do you have? Um, I have this one. It, it's it's a little bit nicer. It's we would call it used very good. <laughs> um, there's no particular marks on it. It is just your standard knife. I don't know what the handle is made of, but it it looks sturdy enough to just grip. What's the next best one? The last one. Uh, the next best one is this. It is a knife made of bone. Not the handle is made of bone. Literally, the knife has been sharpened bone. Um, this one I'm letting go for around 50, 55 gold, although I'm willing to haggle lower if you have something to trade. Hmm. I don't. I appreciate it. How much was the uh, the second knife you used very good? The used very good knife, um, that one, I'm letting that go for about four gold. How about two? Do you have anything to trade? No. Unfortunately, no. The, the slightly rust-colored one I am letting go for two. I'll pay three for the use. Very good. I'll be willing to do that. You're a good man. Have you used very good knife? Just your standard uh, kind of knife and less than three gold. Can I sell anything to, this, to the two of you? Can I have a paper and a piece of charcoal for three? Absolutely. Well, for three, well, if you would like to overpay, absolutely. <laughs> I'll sell it. my paper and my charcoal to this said, table. She, she said free. Oh, for free. <laughs> oh. Oh, you said yes? Okay. One gold. Hmm. For both? For both. It's a package deal. I'm not a savage. <laughs> Give me twice the amount. Two paper and two charcoal for yes. one gold. Yes. I will give you two paper and two charcoal for two gold. As is you the price. Said I could overpay when I offered free. 
You lied to me. I mistook you. I thought you said three. Mm. One gold for two paper and one charcoal. Whatever. Nice. All right. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll pay for her, for her charcoal and papers and she- No, no, I'm not dealing with them anymore. What do you want? You seem like the kind of man who's searching for something. I need a pipe and some tobacco. Wanders into the back. I roll my eyes and walk outside. <laughs> you hear just like some scuffling as if he's like looking through boxes and things. He walks back out. I have this. He sets down an oak wood pipe. It's clearly been polished and like shaven down to be as perfectly smooth as uh, Look, I, humanly I, possible. That, that's gorgeous. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm broke. I have some money. Not a lot. This looks expensive. <laughs> All right. Let me see what I let me see what I got in the back. He walks into the back. Um, he's continuing to search for things. Um, he left the pipe out, did he? He did. Mm. Can I'm, I gonna, roll I'm gonna for take it and go. Oh. <laughs> um, you're gonna have to make a roll for that. I mean, I could have stolen it for you, but okay. Um, that would be a sleight of hand, which you have a plus two for. I'm definitely leaving now. <laughs> Yeah, I'm outside now. So roll your d20. My d20? Yep. Oh god, please don't be a one. Thirteen! Thirteen plus two. You manage to uh, swipe the pipe away um, just before he walks back through the curtain. He's like, well, I've got this. It's made of corn cob and it... Did I leave the applewood oak pipe here? I could have sworn I left this here. Did you, did, did I, you were standing here. Did I leave that out here or did I take that back with me? I don't remember. I, did you not take it back with you? I, I thought I did. I could just be, I, I could. Can I see the corn cob pipe? I mean, yes, you, yes, you, yes, of course. I, I apologize. Yes, you can. He sits a corn cob pipe down. It literally looks like he plucked it out of Frosty's mouth. It's got the thin line with a like cylinder at the end of it. How much is the corn cob pipe? The corn cob pipe I'm letting go for four. Um, my tobacco is two dollars or is two gold uh, per ounce. But if you buy the pipe and an ounce, I'm willing to let it go for only one gold per ounce of tobacco. So, so, so it would be five for both. Five for. Uh, the pipe and one ounce of tobacco. I would like to buy the pipe and the tobacco. Please. Alrighty. So you give him the five gold. So mark the five gold and the. Make sure you've marked all of that. And I'm I'm assuming you're turning around yep. to leave. I'm gonna leave. Uh, one one more thing, sir. You're you're sure you saw me take that back with you? Honestly, I'm not sure. But thank you for this pipe. Is, is, yes. is it good tobacco? Yeah, I, I'm smoking myself. I, I, I enjoy it quite a bit. Fantastic. Where, is, is it locally grown? Yes, I, I grow it in the back. I've got some pots shoved in between the drywall. Fantastic. I really appreciate locally sourced goods. Yeah. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Before you leave, I'm going to have you do a deception check. Roll your d20. <laughs> <laughs> I like your chances. You have a plus five modifier to your deception. <laughs> Nine, so... Nine plus five? Yeah. 14. Yeah, 14. He's a general store salesman. You can get it past him. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. Is there a pawn shop in town? Um, there is. Uh, however, when you leave the store, you can see that Landy and uh, Graz, Graz, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, are standing by, like, a well in the center of town. Um, they, like, wave at you. So if you if you want to ask for more time nah, nah, to go, I'll, I'll meander over. All right, we'll, 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 I'll find a, I'll, I'll pawn this thing later. <laughs> are are you all ready to go? Are you supplied up? Do you have you? Are you going to get a fresh bucket of ice chips, or you think you're good for the road? I'm good. I've had my fill for a week. All right. Are we all ready to go? Did he walk out holding both pipes? What did we see? Um, I mean, he kind of. <laughs> okay. I imagine. He kind of backed out, and as he backed out, you see shoved in the back of his pants, just kind of like sticking out half of the pipe. I saw it. Yeah, it's very clear to the two of you. Okay. All right, are you all ready to go? You ready to depart? 
Yeah, let's go. Yeah. All right. Shatterbone looks at you all. All right. It's going to move on. Um, as you journey through this three-day trek, the scenery around you becomes wilder. Farmland and meadows give way to thick, tangled forests and stretches of open moor. After a morning spent trudging through a muddy road, uh, Landy uh, declares that there is an inn just around the bend of the next road that you all will stop at and stay at uh, while you, uh, and then you will continue the next half of your journey. With the thoughts of a warm fire and dry clothes spurring you all, you make the final push and hurry up the slope. Um, but the moment that the inn comes into view, it is very clear that something is wrong. Um, at a glance, it's easy to mistake the three-story building for a small fortress with narrow slits for windows and tough-looking stone walls. The oaken door at the front of the building is thick and sturdy-looking, but has been thrown wild open, or wide open, banging back and forth in the breeze. The slumped form of a dead horse lies in the middle of the road, smack in the middle between you all and the inn. Um, and the stables where it once would have been next to the inn are a smoldering pile of charred wood and bones. It is not a wounded and like half breathing, it's, it's, it's a dead horse. What do the wounds look like? Like what, was it, was it stabbed? Was it, was it torn asunder by some kind of living thing? It was partially eaten. Great. Excellent. 